Another system that is very overlooked in our bodies is the detoxification system. This includes our liver and our lymph system. The liver is one of the most important organs in the body. It's usually known as the filter, but it's technically more of a recycling center. It, every drop of your, your blood in the body runs through your liver every single hour to be restored and cleaned. The liver filters out hormones, cholesterol, vitamins and minerals, enzymes, bacteria, viruses, and chemicals. It actually helps to produce bile that's stored in the gallbladder, which helps digestion. And it helps to create vitamins A and D, and it stores them in the liver. Copper also usually stores minerals like iron and copper as well, and B12. Chemicals aren't actually stored in the liver. They are processed through the liver, and if your liver is clogged up, then it goes into storage in f your fat. So a lot of obese people tend to have a very sluggish liver because they can't filter out all of the toxins. The liver can be damaged, especially by alcohol and any kind of drug use, pharmaceutical or illicit but it can also be regenerated with a lot of help. Sluggish liver plays a part in every single illness out there. If your liver cannot function and filter out toxins, then it, it, you're not going to be healthy. And every cell in healthy livers are actually replaced every 40 days. So it's, it's a really amazing organ. When we're thinking of liver health, you see a lot of things about liver cleanses, but the liver doesn't need to be cleaned. It actually just needs support in order to work better. It's more likely to be sluggish, but not clogged. A lot of cleanses can actually weaken the body because it puts a lot more stress on, on all of your organs to clean out things way too fast. Fasting is something that many people have had success with, but as far as liver and adrenal health go, it's definitely not something you want to do if you're already sick. And avoiding conventional beauty products and household cleaners with all of those endocrine disruptors, you just want to stay away from because your liver has to filter those as well. So getting rid of as many chemicals, toxic chemicals as you can is going to help your liver health. So how do we support our liver? There are countless ways. A main thing is to eat cooked food. Raw food is actually more work for both the liver and adrenals. It's more likely to have pathogens which are going to weaken your body and give your liver more work to do. Eating enough good healthy fats like grass-fed butter and dairy, coconut oil and grass-fed meats, these are all essential and they are they have a lot of nutrients that are needed by the liver, like sulfur-containing proteins. And we also want to eat as organic as possible to eliminate all the pesticide exposure. If you can even grow your own food so you know exactly what's going in your food, that's even better. Even organic produce is tainted. Not as much as conventional, but it's still, it's still not perfect. And finding ways to release anger is actually extremely important for liver health. You, we can literally build up emotions in our body, and anger is stored in the liver. Keeping everything bottled up inside can really have a, an effect on our entire body. So finding ways to release anger, punching pillows, maybe playing a video game and yelling, it, things like that are going to help your body just release all the tension and it'll help help it, your liver work better. Some herbs for liver support, which I've personally used, and they are all amazing. Dandelion, usually in a tea. It really helps. It increase, increases bile flow. Nettles, I make nettle infusions and drink them almost daily. Milk thistle is another great supplement. Most people will go for the pills. Milk thistle itself kind of tastes really bitter but bitter herbs are great for the liver. And also castor oil packs and coffee enemas. I love castor oil packs. 
they help so much to relax you and they help the lymph flow as well and coffee enemas there's a link in the resources for you on the history of coffee enemas thousands millions of people have used them it's been around for thousands of years some people just say no 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 and a lot of people really swear by them they help to make your liver work a little bit better so the liver has two phases of detoxification phase one helps to convert the toxic chemicals into less harmful ones this phase needs magnesium niacin iron riboflavin NADH which is actually dependent on amino acids like tryptophan and aspartic acid and it also needs some indoles from cruciferous veggies which are sulfur containing compounds and grapefruit and curcumin like from turmeric can inhibit phase one it actually makes the toxins recirculate longer before they are either rendered inert or excreted phase two this adds another substance to a toxic chemical to make it less harmful it actually turns drugs hormones and toxins into water soluble substances so they can be excreted this phase is dependent on glutathione sulfate glycine and glutamine which are amino acids and choline so you can get most of these nutrients from foods like bone broth, eggs, cruciferous veggies, and raw garlic. The glutathione is the master detoxer in the body. It's one of the most important nutrients for the liver. The lymphatic system is another key player in detox. It's actually dependent on movement to keep it flowing. Things like castor oil packs actually help stimulate the lymph flow and rebounding, which is jumping on a, on a trampoline. Uh, it, it actually helps your body's lymphatic system move and remove waste faster. Rebounding is something that's actually used by NASA to help the astronauts with, with certain kinds of exercises. And I've left a link in the resources for you about rebounding. The lymphatic system helps to filter pathogens. It actually makes white blood cells, which is something that the castor oil packs actually have been proven to do. It, it creates more white blood cells in your body. The system transports fatty acids from the circulatory system as well. And some symptoms of a sluggish lymphatic system include chronic pain, inflammation, any autoimmune disorder like lupus, allergies, cellulite, and chronic conge congestion. There are dozens of symptoms for having a sluggish lymphatic system. Most of us do, especially if we have a sit-down job or we tend to be couch potatoes. We definitely don't need crazy amounts of exercise, but we do need to keep our bodies moving. Even just a walk every day or a few times a week can help your lymphatic system work better. And detoxing can bring about some interesting symptoms, but supporting your liver and lymph system can help reduce the flare-ups. People will call these healing reactions, healing crises, or flare-ups. And they're just a temporary increase of your current sy symptoms of whatever illness you're going through, or even past symptoms. When these, these healing crises end, you feel so much better than you do, than you ever have in years. And common retracing symptoms can be generic, like constipation, diarrhea, aches and pains, headaches, fatigue, anxiety, anger, or depression. Or they can be very specific to an illness that you had before, or even a sprain or a broken, broken limb. You might feel pain in that certain area again as that, that part of your body is healing again. The healing process is very complex and science can't even explain it especially because things like long lost memories can resurface emotions that were held in at some point those will start coming out 
because your body is cleaning itself and it's rebuilding. And these symptoms might seem like something you don't want to go through, but in order to obtain perfect health, there's definitely going to be some some uncomfortable moments. I've gone through a lot of healing crises myself, and it's definitely changed my life to a point where I want to help people realize their healing potential. So the healing crisis is definitely an amazing factor in, in health, and it can truly change everything.